Hello there, Reason People. Pooh Bear here, and welcome to my channel. I've been having a quick chat with someone on the forum who's using Reason in a live situation. And there's many different ways that you can actually use Reason in a live situation, really from using it as a backing track, right up to just using it as a basic sound source. And that is really what they're doing, it. they're using it as a sound source. And again, there's many different ways you can use it as a sound source. The way they've implemented it at the moment is they have one combinator, they have all their instruments within that combinator, and then by use of the mute and fader functionality, they can switch between instruments extremely quickly. However, there is one big downside to that particular setup, which would be when you start to add more and more instruments, you're going to really start hitting on DSP issues because obviously as you're playing that combinator, all the instruments will be playing just the fact you cannot hear them, so they would all be chewing up that DSP for no reason at all. And I'll come up with a solution, which I'm going to show you, and it's a very simple solution, and it's making good use of the new MIDI CV player, and uh, let's jump in and see what it really looks like. So I've got this combinator, and I've got three heavy patches in it only, and each of these devices are going off to their own mix channel and as you can see, they're actually all muted. And all I'm gonna do now really is just play just a, a couple of chords and um, here we go. We've got a computer to slow message. And I know this was an extreme case, but what I'm trying to sort of prove here or say to people here is, you know, once you've got this combinator and you start adding, adding more and more instruments to it, you are going to start hitting on issues. So this is going to get around that kind of issue. And it's going to open up a few other possibilities. And I think it could even make playing live just that little bit easier. So I'm just going to grab these instruments and take them out of the combinator. Put them with each with their respective mix channel here. Now, obviously, I'm not going to win any awards here by going, look, it's not crashing now, but not no DSP issues. Yeah, that's, that's, we expected that. So what I'm actually going to do now, I'm going to actually use the CV MIDI converter, and this patch is obviously available to download. There'll be a link in the description. I'm just going to take the master, and this uh, WBL is actually an instrument, so I can actually drop a, a player on top of it. And I'm going to take my next player and I'm going to put it on top of the next instrument. So on and so forth. Nothing special going on here. Bring the left down. And give myself focus over here. And now obviously I can actually control the input of each of these MIDI converters. So if I now play a chord, The great thing about MIDI is, I'm going to turn it off and turn the next one on. I haven't lost my tail. And again, so I've got to turn the release right up on these. And this is what a, a nice thing is to say, because it's MIDI. And we're, all we're doing is turning the MIDI off. Whereas before, when we're muting, we're just obviously mute the audio signal dead. In this case, we're actually at the MIDI side of it and we're just sort of cutting the MIDI out. So the instrument will still go through its full envelope and we're not going to lose any of our trails. Of course, we can still use our faders to um, adjust what we need to adjust. There's, there's, no, there's no issues of using them as well. So this kind of setup tackles uh, any DSP kind of issue. You may not be having any issues now, but obviously you, the more instruments you start stringing together, the more you could get into issues. Uh, but it does raise a new issue, which is to do with performance data. There is absolutely no aftertouch or breath control, expression pedals, or whatever you might be using, coming down this signal chain. It's coming to this combinator and nothing else is happening. Um, so this MIDI CV converter doesn't transfer that data. But we can do something about it. And the late Hamu has made all his devices free of charge. Um, and they're worth looking through. Now, what we've got here are three mod panels. We've got a 16, 12, and 8. And the two you're going to have to be interested in are the 12 and 8 because this actually can handle performance data, whereas the 16 doesn't. 
So on this um, mod panel, uh, obviously we've got uh, eight channels which we can use and it's worth probably, again for a live performance, using these and utilizing these and maybe even doing some mapping to these. So all you have to do is map this once and it doesn't matter what you're shoving at the other end, you can then just use a CV cable to go and control it and it, I think it's going to make life a little bit easier as well. But down here, you can see we've got all this performance data which we need, we can get across. So what I'm actually going to do here now is actually just delete this all out. Click to the back, so nothing's wired up whatsoever. Um, let's create ourselves um, a new device and let's go, there we go, good for some paper, that's fair enough. And so the next thing I'm going to do on that is I'm just going to grab this MIDI CV, put it at the top and hold in shift control and actually just do a copy. It hasn't wired it up, it's just moved it over. So what we need to do is take the gate out and put it into the input gate. And obviously, same with the note. So be note out to the in. Just as before, this should now be, let's put my keyboard back up. This should now be working. But again, there is absolutely no performance data going through. So the first thing I'm going to do is combine this up. Now this is combined up, we've got a choice of where this MIDI CV converter is going to go. You're going to sit it outside the combinator because obviously you could have multiple layers of instruments in here, so it play all of them instruments. Or if you actually had it in here and you had multiple layer of instruments, it's only ever going to play this instrument in this combinator. So I'm going to put it at the top, this makes more sense to me. And just for quickness, and I will go through another setup in a second, I'm just going to take the mod wheel out and I'm going to put it into this lovely mod wheel in the combinator. And the same, let's take the pitch and put that in. Now there isn't any other options for the rest of the controls to do with your after touch or your expression, breath control sustain. But we've got, we can obviously get these in. You've got a choice of four CVs in, or you can actually use the rotaries. So if you've got other things coming in to this CV controls, a from the mod panel itself, there is eight ways you can get stuff in. And obviously, because I am using Europa, obviously we can actually go directly to the instrument as well itself. If you do use the rotaries, just remember to turn them down. So if you don't turn it down, that would be the signal, whatever you're going to program inside it, which will be sent straight away, no matter if you are you, you know, you're pressing to get your after touch or not, or hitting your pressure pedal or whatever. So do remember to turn them down. So just for quickness, I'm actually going to put it into CV1. Put it's going into CV1 and the type of controller it is, I'm just going to make it unipolar. And of course, we're now ready to map that up. Um, obviously, we're going to go to CV1 input here. And yeah, okay, if we come into here, we can say performance. And yeah, we've got aftertouch down here. So we can go straight to aftertouch if the instrument itself has been configured to do something with aftertouch. So a lot of instruments are not actually configured to do anything. You've got to go in and actually program them. Or there's some early stock devices which don't even have these options. So under performance, all you ever usually get to see is the um, pitch and the mod. You don't actually get to see anything else in there. Um, or as I was saying really before, if you wanted to, you can go obviously straight to the parameter you really want that after touch to affect. Um, and I suppose let's, uh, let's let's put it on to tune in this particular case. So if I make sure that this is highlighted, and yeah, it's working. And the same is going to apply for the rest. So I'm just going to disconnect these very very quickly because really. What we need to do with this is put it into a splitter and then once we've gone from the splitter that's where how we need to start wiring it up so the splitters i tend to use are the um polymodulus splitters yeah 
And the way I like to wire these up is I try to do things by rows. So I'm going to take the out of that first one, put it into the in, out to the in, out to the in, and I'm going to use that first row all for my mod wheel. And I'm going to use the second row all for my pitch wheel. And then the next one's going to be the after touch, and then it'll be the expression, uh, breath control, and sustain. You might not want to use all of them up. That's you know that, that's absolutely fair enough. What I'm going to do now is hit Control D. So I'm going to just going to duplicate that to save a bit of work. So the mod's going to go into the first one. The pitch is going into the second one, and the after touch is going into the third one. And one of the reasons I wire things up this way is because I now know that this row here is after touch, and it doesn't matter which port I take, they're all going to be after touch. If I was to take that out and put that back into our CV1 in there, I know for a fact that if I now play my keyboard, yeah, we've now got the aftertouch running. Um, another little point about these MIDI CV out, obviously you've got yourself eight outs. If you suddenly go, oh, I need more than eight outs, again, it's not a problem. You just grab it, control shift, and create yourself another eight. So you know you've got 16. Um, where it's going to be fun is obviously starting to program up your actual controller itself. The net tiles are nice because we can we can use something called pages, so we can actually have these eight buttons doing something and very quickly with the click of the button, I've got another eight pages and another click, and I can have another eight. So it's a lot easier on the net tile to actually sort of navigate around. Um, that's kind of covered most things. So we've now and all the DSP issue, and we've also um, got over the issue of the performance data going through. And as I say, one of the big things about using the MIDI CV converters is you can just now go and load up a nice massive patch. Well, it's got loads of effects and all the rest of it has already been predefined, um, and it's, it's probably going to sound a lot richer than just just using a basic instrument, maybe with just one or two effects on it. Hope you find this useful. Maybe uh, if you come up with other little workarounds or you, you've looked at this and think, oh, there was one or two other ish little issues, just let me know because um, I'm pretty sure other people would be uh, wanting to know as well. So, anyway, thank you for listening and watching. Bye for now.